Well, good morning, everyone. Well, I'm so excited about this morning. We are blessed this morning. We have a potter with us this morning. Why don't you come out, Denise? Help me welcome Denise Castro. Denise is actually the mother of one of our boot camp students, Jordan. So we're so honored to have you with us today. I believe on your way out today, you're going to get to see some of her amazing works of art in person. So please check that out. So if you find my sermon boring this morning, I think you're going to enjoy the pottery at least. So you can keep your eyes on that. But I'm going to be preaching this morning a sermon called Still on the Wheel. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. Now, I love art. I love what's going to happen up here this morning. I appreciate it. But man, when I was a kid, every every mom knows about this. In kindergarten, you got to learn how to master the crayons and the scissors. You have to make that that little piece of pottery. I don't think, I I think they almost held me back from graduating kindergarten because I am terrible at it. Man, my ashtray, it was the 80s, okay, ashtray, looked more like, you know, like something like this, you know. I was never good at art, but I I so appreciate it. And God uses this picture of art to speak to us. And that's what we're going to see in our text this morning in Jeremiah chapter 18. God as the master potter. Somebody say amen. Amen. Let's go to, to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I thank you for your presence, for your anointing. Lord, I pray that you would speak your word through me. Lord, I am but clay. I am nothing and you are everything. But I pray this morning I would be a tool in your hand. That Holy Spirit, you'd come and you would anoint these words. That they would pierce our heart. That they would bring about change that we be all that you've called us to be in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Amen. God told Jeremiah to go down to to the potter's house. He didn't just give him a vision. God actually told me, "I, I want you to go, and I want you to go to the potter's house. And that's where we pick up in Jeremiah 18. This is the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as he seemed best. Then the word of the Lord came to me and he said, Can I not do with you, Israel, as the potter does, declares the Lord. Like clay in the hand of the potter, so you are in my hand. And everyone said, amen. Amen. I want to talk about three things real quick this morning. Number one, God is present at the wheel working. The Bible says, so I went to the potter's house and I saw him working at the wheel. In our text, you see God as the potter. You see the clay, the people, his people as clay, And you also see the potter's wheel that's spinning. This potter's wheel is where the clay is being molded by the potter. We see that laid out clearly in Isaiah 64, 8. It says this, But now, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. And all of us are the works of your hand. Notice with me the potter. The master potter sits at the wheel. He is present at the wheel in our text. He is working. He is active. It's not a passive position. It's not a distant position. Here it shows the Lord working intimately with the clay. You'll notice with me how the potter constantly has to keep their hands on the clay, molding, shaping, Here we see God is presence. He's a hands-on God. He doesn't delegate this task to anybody else. God is seated at the wheel, present there, working on the clay. When the potter sits down at the wheel like my sister did, is doing right now, the artist has a vision for the final product. They're not just getting up there and 
making it up as they go along. They have a vision for what that clay is going to become. They have a vision for a masterpiece, something usable, something beautiful. And this is the same way with, with God in our life. God sees the potential in the clay. He doesn't see mud, he sees a masterpiece. Ephesians 2.10 says this, for we are his workmanship, speaking of God. Workmanship means a work of art. For we are God's work of art. How many of you know you're God's work of art? And he's hands on, present at the wheel. For we are his workmanship. We are created in Christ Jesus for good works which God has prepared beforehand so that we would walk them out. You're a work of art. You're not an ashtray. You're not something cheap. You're a work of art and God is working on you. 2 Timothy 2.21, if a man therefore purge himself from these things, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and fit for the master's use. How many of you want to be a vessel fit for the master's use? Amen. I want to be a vessel fit for the master to use me. So God is at the wheel working. That's my first point this morning. He's working. He's constantly working. His hands are at the wheel. He's not taking a lunch break. He hasn't checked out. He's not taking a nap. He's there until it's done. He's working. He's got a plan. He's got a vision for your life. He's got a vision for your family. He's working. My second point this morning, that the the potter has a good purpose in mind. Not only is he working, he's working for your good. Bible says in verse four, but the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands so that the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. You guys all know this stuff. How many of you loved Play-Doh when you were a kid? All right. I got to admit, I still love Play-Doh now. I still love it. It's nothing like the feel of, of Play-Doh in your hand. But, but basically, what is Play-Doh? It's clay. It's not quite the quality of what the artist is using right now, but it's clay. It's, it's, made, it's made from mud. It's, it's shapeless. It's common. This stuff has little value. There, there's not much to clay. But one thing about clay, it is moldable. It is pliable. You can do something with it. And here the word of God uses that as an illustration for who we are. We're clay, ordinary, made from dirt, not much function. We, we see the potter and then we see this ordinary clay. In my hands, this clay stays clay. There's not much to it. It's not, it's, it's not going very far. Actually, this is about as far as it's going in my hand. It's not, not, not much potential to it. But how many of you know when this clay goes into the hand of a master potter, it becomes something much more. There's endless possibilities when you change the location from my hand to the potter's hand. You know, we may be ordinary, but we're in the hand of the master potter and location changes everything. The ordinary becomes extraordinary. The unusable becomes usable. We're in the hand of the master potter. It's the best place we can be, be, we can be. And he's there molding and shaping our lives. Our scripture says that The Lord is molding the clay as it seems best to the Lord. That's a good place. That's a good thing. Romans 8, 28, you know it. And we know that God works all things for good to those that love him. How many of you love the Lord in this place? So you can be confident that God is at the wheel. He is present and he's working for your good. You can be confident that we have a good potter with a great vision for your life. And he's there molding, shaping. In every trial, in every pain, in every hurt, the potter stays and he works. He's still at the wheel working for your good. He stays there working, working every angle. 
working. Psalm 139, 17 says, how beautiful are your thoughts to me, O God. How vast is the sum of them. When I count them, they would outnumber the grain of sand. God is thinking good for your life. So we have to be confident in that. He's molding us right now, right now. Even as I speak, he's molding you. He's shaping. The wheel is spinning. Do you realize that? But this molding, it's a process. It's not quick. You know, we like quick. We like fast food. We like fast internet. We like to get in and out, right? Like go, go, here we go. Then we're off to the next place. We are quick. Right now, my way, right away. It's, it's, it's everything we want at time. It's ticking. But with the Lord, it's a process. It takes time in your life. It takes months. It takes years. It takes a lifetime. It's a process. Just like the potter up here. She'll be molding. Not for five minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Making what the potter intends it to be. It's time. It's a process. Verse 4. But the pot the potter was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it at sea as it seemed best to him. That word marred in our text means flawed, damaged, stained. There's a weakness in the clay. There's imperfections in the clay. The potter found that the clay was marred. You know, the marring in the clay can, can ruin the result. If there's air bubbles, if the potter's at the wheel and there's air bubbles in there, they gotta work those air bubbles out. Because once that, once that pottery's hardened, what's gonna happen to those air bubbles? It's gonna crack. So the potter has to find the marred places and work on them. Working and shaping, as our scripture says, until he seems fit. Molding, shaping, removing the imperfections. At times, the potter has to squeeze to get those things out. At times, the potter has to be gentler to refine those edges and to refine those, those smaller parts. But it's all part of the process to make something beautiful out of your life. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, he makes everything beautiful in its time. Isaiah 43.19, you know it. Behold, I, the Lord, makes all things new. But there's a process. Church, listen to me. There's glory on your story. God is not done with your story. God has a great plan for your life. But he's working on you at the wheel. And his hands are on working out those issues, those imperfections, those hurts. It's a process. You notice with me as our potter is working, you'll notice she's, she'll take a sponge or she'll take water. And the potter is constantly adding water to the clay. Why is that? Because if you don't add water to that clay, the, 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 the clay begins to get hard prematurely. The, the clay becomes harder for the master, to, the master potter to change things in it. So the master has to add water. The master has to add water to our lives. The spirit comes to soften those hard places. The word of God pierces those hard things in our life to soften us so he can use us and work in us and work through us. There's glory on your story, but it's a process. Molding, shaping, adding water. Adding water so the, the clay doesn't harden and become something unusable. There's a process. There's also the firing process. Now that doesn't sound too good. When the potter is just about done, they'll take that pottery and they'll put it into the firing process. Because the fire is part of the process. Now we don't like it, but without the firing, where 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 actually strengthens the bonds within the clay, it's the fire that makes that thing strong and usable. If it wasn't for the fire, that that pottery is just a decoration. It won't be something a vessel that can be used. 
So there has to be the firing. God is trying to make us stronger, the structures, the foundation, and he won't stop until he's done transforming us. He stays at the wheel, stays at the wheel, forming, fashioning, molding a vessel fit for the master's use through the process perfecting every angle, working on you, because this is his intention. It's beautiful. It's usable. It's a masterpiece. But it comes through a process of molding and shaping in your life that we need to stay on the potter's wheel. So the first point this morning is that, that God is at the wheel. My second point this morning is that he has an intention for good for your life. And my last point this morning is our God is on the job, but our job is to stay on the potter's wheel. We can't do, we can't do God's job. We can't fix ourselves. We can't mold ourselves. We can't shape ourselves. His job is to be at the wheel. God's job is to do the molding through his word and through the spirit. And he's taking those marred areas and working on it. That's his job. But we have a job to do. We got to stay at the wheel. Church, you got to stay at the wheel. Isaiah 59 verse 9 says this. Sorry, Isaiah 45 verse 9 says this. What sorrow awaits those who argue with their creator? Does a clay pot argue with its maker? Does the clay dispute with the one who shapes it, saying, stop, you are doing this wrong? This is, the, this is the word of God. Is the clay arguing with the potter right now? What are you doing? How clumsy are you? Isaiah 45, 9, stop, stop what you're doing. Does the pot exclaim, you are clumsy? No. But this is what, this is how silly it looks for us as the clay to argue with God. God, how long do I have to stay on this wheel? How long are you going to continue to mold me? Stop what you're doing. The clay has to be on the wheel. Church, the, the clay has to be on the wheel. What God makes of you depends on your response at the wheel. The clay can frustrate the potter's intentions. We've got to be submitted to the potter, but not only submitted to the potter, but submitted to the process that the potter is putting the clay through. Submitted to the work of the potter. Now it's easy, God, I submit to you. God, I, I worship you and I, I give you my life. I give you my heart. I'm submitted to you, God, but, but God, that hurts. When you touch that area in my life, when you're working out that imperfection, that's uncomfortable, right? But we gotta be submitted to the process. I, I, I'll, take, I'll take the potter, but not all this molding, all this spinning around and around and around. Oh, church, we have a tendency to resist the, the Lord's refinements. Have you ever felt like that in your own life? The clay arguing with the master potter because it just doesn't understand the process. The wheel keeps spinning. The process is always happening, but we don't like it. We want it right now. Hurry up, Potter, or I'm out of here. Listen, church, you can get off the wheel. You can get off the wheel. We can get off the wheel before the Lord is done with us. Halfway through the process, we're not quite done yet, but we've had enough and we've given up, we've given up and we're out of here. We can harden our hearts, we, we resist the work, but God wants to touch those areas in your life. God wants to touch those marred areas, but God wants to deal with those things. But, but we resist, God, that, that, part is, that part is painful. That sin, that, that offense in our life, but church, the, the wheel is a place of purification. The wheel is a place of hope for us. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 says, we are hard pressed on every side, but we are not crushed. 
We're perplexed, but we're not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but we are not destroyed. Listen to me, church. Do not fear the potter's wheel and do not refuse it because it's at this place where he's molding you and conforming you into his image. This is the place where impurities and defilements are destroyed and the bruises and the blemishes are erased. Oh, church, the potter's wheel is the place where the rough edges are smoothed out and broken vessels are restored and old mindsets are dismantled. Oh, this is the place afflictions and traumas and misfortunes from the past are annihilated and dreams will be birthed and brought forth. The potter's wheel. This is the place where the mind is renewed by the spirit and we learn to walk in humility and integrity and maturity. Oh, church, the potter's wheel is the place of renewal, hope, maturity, and destiny. Oh, church, would you stay on the potter's wheel? Must ask the Lord to soften the clay of our hearts just as this clay is pliable and moldable. Soften our hearts, God. God, the only way we're gonna become all that you've called us to be is to remain pliable in your hands. Pliable. Church, are you pliable? Or have you been hardened? My heart is hard from the hurts of the past. My heart is hard from the sins of this world. My heart is hard from all the disappointments. My heart is hardened. But the Lord wants our hearts to be softened by his hands. Church, they're good hands. You can be confident you're in the hands of God. You can be confident he's doing a good work in you. You can be confident he'll work those things out of you if you just stay on the wheel tender to his corrections? Are we tender to his disciplines? Are we tender to his convictions? Pliable? Pliable. when he puts his hands on something, he's trying to deal with that in your life. Pliable. He's going somewhere with you. He's trying to do something in you. Do you realize he's trying to make something out of you that's beautiful, it's spectacular, but he's trying and he, he's pushing and he's, he's molding and he's trying. He puts his hands on something. He's trying to deal with it. That anger. Soften that anger, God. Soften that bitterness. Soften that unforgiveness, that hatred. Oh, God, remove the stains and the sin and the marred parts of the clay of my heart. Soften my heart, oh, God. Are we pliable? I have seen it so many times. We get hard. We go through the motions. The Spirit of the Lord is present and He's trying to touch our hearts and, and we allow pride. We allow anger. We allow unforgiveness like Pastor Daniel was talking about earlier. He's trying to touch that relationship and, and that hurt you had when you were a child and that hurt you had from a family member. And he's trying to work on those areas. The temptation is to get off the wheel. Soft to the touch of the potter. Work it out of me, God. Work it out of the clay. I want to be a vessel fit for the master's use, so we must wave the white flag and surrender to the potter. Lord, I see you at the wheel of my life, and I'm gonna stay on the wheel. Church, we're either in the process of being shaped by his truth or we are resisting his work. Don't resist. Stay on the wheel. Just like you, my, my life has had trials. My, my life has had crossroads. 
My life has had conflict. My life has had trauma. My life has had betrayals. My life has had persecutions. My life has experienced those hurt things that hurt so deeply in my heart. But when the pressure has come, I'm here to tell you I'm still on the wheel. When the testing has come, I'm here to tell you I'm still on the wheel. When the criticisms has come, I'm still on the wheel. When the trials have come, I'm still on the wheel. Stay on the wheel, church. I, I know God's not done with me. There's glory on my story. I'm called to be a vessel fit for the master's use, but so are you. So are you. So are you. The difference between just a lump of clay and this is that this stayed the process. This resists the process. Doesn't want to be complete. Doesn't want to work on those areas in your life. And this stayed on the wheel. It stayed. It stayed until it was done. It stayed until the master was finished with the work. It stayed through the trials. It stayed through the hard times. It stayed through the pain. It stayed when others forsaken you. It stayed when others hurt you. It stayed on the wheel. When others betrayed you, it stayed on the wheel. When you were hurt and persecuted and the backs were turned against you, stay on the wheel. That's our only testimony. There's glory on our story. Stay on the wheel. I prophesy to you this morning, stay on the wheel. It's the word of the Lord, stay on the wheel. Don't give up. Some of you are just on the verge of giving up. You, you feel like you've been spinning and spinning around and around and it's never gonna end. But I feel like the spirit of the Lord is saying, stay right where you're at, stay on the wheel. Don't give up prematurely. Don't give up halfway through. I just started the work that I've intended for your life. I got a great plan and purpose for your life. Stay in the process and stay on the wheel. He's at work, don't give up. Don't you dare think about it. It reminds me of him. And I'm closing from, and the worship team can come from 1907. Have thine own way, Lord. Some of you know this one. Have thine own way. You are the potter. I am the clay. Mold me. Mold me. And make me after thy will. While I still wait yielded to thee. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Maybe this message is not for you. Maybe it's for me. Mold me, Lord. After thy will. Have thine own way. It's not too late if you're hearing me now and hearing this message. Maybe you're watching online. It's not too late. You're still on the wheel. Stay there. Stay there. Let God finish the work. He that started a good work in you is faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful to complete it. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord. Wash me just now. As in thy presence, humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord. Have the, thine own way. Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Power, all power, surely is thine. When the potter is just about done with the masterpiece, they'll begin to carve little refinements into the pottery. And then the last thing the potter does, he'll carve, or they will carve their initials on the bottom of that pottery. Those initials say, this was made by the potter, and this item belongs to me. Church, God's not done with you. 
He's going to write His initials. He's going to write His initials into your life. You belong to the Master Potter and He's making something beautiful out of you. We belong to Him. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Let's just worship for a minute. Jesus, we love you. Oh, Jesus. You're the master potter. You're everything, 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 Lord. You are the potter and I'm just the clay. Lord, I pray this morning by the Spirit of God, touch lives, touch lives. The pain, the hurts, no matter where we're at on that wheel spinning, God, you're there, your hands on, your hands are in the clay and you're molding and you're shaping. God, I pray we stay on the wheel, stay on the wheel, stay on the wheel, stay on the wheel until you finish the job making a vessel fit for the master's use. Jesus, we love you, we love you, we love you. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your presence here right now. I pray you move across this auditorium and those that are watching online, those that are going especially through a difficult place in their life right now, May they sense the touch of the master's hands.